Hey, what is going on everybody? It's Steven here and welcome back to another Chinese smartphone review. Now today we're going to have a look at the Ulephone BX, which is a very interesting smartphone. So the Ulephone BX is a low budget phone, that means it retails for something like $90, but comes with some pretty nice specs in my opinion. And personally, I also really love the style, so it's very small, very easy to operate with one hand, and yeah, Ulephone, a pretty good brand. And it's a official sample from Ulephone, but I will leave you a link to the reseller down below in the description. So for instance, eFox Shop sells it, Gearbest, and also when we open up our shop, so in one or two weeks, then we'll also sell Ulephone products, and maybe also the BX, because it's a very nice product. Now yeah, let's get started, and let me show you the Ulephone BX. Alright guys, so first of all, let me show you the specs of the phone. And yeah, sorry, sometimes you will see some reflections and lens flare because I have upgraded my lens and I still need to get all the filters and they are very expensive. But also at the weekend I will do a update video on my rig, so I will show you what I use to record all that stuff here. Alright, but let's talk about the Ulephone BX. Now, this smartphone is really small and very handy, so it comes with a only 4.5 inch QHD IPS screen. So QHD here is 960 times 540 pixels. And I have to say the display is not really good, so the resolution is quite low and also it could be brighter. But yeah, the display is the worst part and the rest is really awesome. Now it comes with dual band Wi-Fi, so 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. It comes with the Octa-Core MTK6592 SoC, clocked at 1.4 GHz, so it's the slower clocked Octa-Core, not the true Octa-Core, which runs at 2 GHz. It also comes with GPS with a GPS a 2 megapixel front facing camera which looks quite good, a 8 megapixel rear camera with LED flash and the LED flash is very weak, it can record HD and also playback HD, 1 gigabyte of RAM plus 8 gigabytes of ROM and you can also use 64 gigabyte SD cards so that's absolutely no problem. It supports USB on the go, I can confirm it, and it's a dual SIM dual standby phone so that means you can insert two SIM cards, one micro SIM card and one big SIM card and both slots support 3G. It also comes with a 1900 mAh battery, which is quite enough to power it the whole day, Bluetooth 4.0 onboard, and it runs Android KitKat straight out of the box. Alright, so that are the specs of the BX, and for the price, pretty good. And now I would say, let's go and let's have a look at the Ulephone BX. So there we go guys, I have already unpacked it, and here is the smartphone. Now, usually when you buy a Ulephone, there is not that much included in the box. So here we have a quick starter guide which comes in different languages, but yeah, without pictures, so just plain text. And yeah, um, you won't need it, so just throw it away. Then we also have here the charger, and it's a default 5 watt charger, so actually nothing special. The charging time is average, but yeah, I haven't used it a lot because I use my own charging accessories just for safety reasons. And yeah, the charger here looks quite good, and here you can see it outputs 1 amp at 5 volts. And yeah, that equals 5 watts, so actually nothing special. Then here you can see a micro USB cable to connect it to the computer or to charge it. And this is also included, and yeah, that's pretty much everything. There is no headset included, just a screen protector here, which is a normal screen protector, so no tempered glass screen protector. And you just get here the basic accessories. So if you want a headset or something, you should order it with the smartphone, because it's not included. But it comes in a pretty nice box. And this is how the Ulephone BX looks like. And now let's check it out. First of all, let me give you a quick overview over the smartphone. Sorry for the reflections, but I will get my pole filter tomorrow. And yeah, this is how it looks like. When you switch off the display, um, the front side here is really black. The display completely black. That looks pretty good. And the display is definitely IPS because it looks really great. The phone itself is not too big and I absolutely love the design of it. Now the whole phone is made out of plastic, but yeah, what do you expect from a $90 phone? All in all I have to say the build quality pretty good. I'm not sure about the glass, but it seems to be pretty scratch resistant. And there's also a screen protector included. Then now you will see some close-ups starting with the display. And the viewing angles and the colors are pretty nice. Just the brightness in my opinion could be a bit brighter. Although the resolution is pretty okay, I mean the resolution is not that high. But the display is also very small, so just 4.5 inches, and you get something like 240 pixels per inch, which is actually okay for the price. So the whole phone, just $90, always keep in mind the price. At the bottom of the front side, you will find three capacitive buttons. So we have a capacitive home button, back button, and menu button. And as you can see, they don't have backlight. 
but yeah, they reflect the light, so they illuminate a bit, but yeah, they don't have any backlight. And it would be way cooler if it comes with a red backlight or something, but yeah, those buttons here are really awesome, but no backlight. Then, as I've said before, the whole phone is made out of plastic. Now, yeah, the frame which you can see here looks a bit like metal, but it's actually just painted plastic. On the left side of the smartphone you have the volume rockers, like you can see here. Also plastic buttons, but I have to say, they feel pretty good to press. On the opposite side of the frame you have a power button, and this is also plastic, but yeah, once again, just feels like the volume rocker is really good to press. And at the bottom of the right side you can see that little slot here to remove the back cover, because the back cover and the battery is removable, and you can also insert micro SD cards. And as we can may see, I have used it a lot. So I have used it now for one week, dropped it several times, there are just some scratches on the frame, but yeah, it's still alive. Then here we have a 3.5mm headphone jack at the top, and you can connect a headset here, and I have to say the quality from the headphone jack is really good. And also here's a micro USB port to connect the micro USB charging cable, or yeah, to connect the little smartphone here to the computer or whatever. Then here's a quick close-up of the backside, and at the top we have the 8 megapixel rear camera, under the rear camera we have the LED flash, then here you can see the Ulefone logo on the white back cover, but yeah, there's also a black version, and at the bottom here we have a very big speaker grid, but the speaker is actually very small, as you will see later. Then I would say, let's go now and let's remove the back cover. Alright, so you can easily remove the back cover right over here, just go in here with your fingernail and pull it off. And under the back cover you will find the battery, and you can once again remove it with your fingernail. And yeah, let's just have a look at the battery. It comes with the Ulefone logo, weighs something like 40 grams. And the battery is pretty slim with a 3 pin connector. And here on the sticker it says something like 1900 milliamp hours. And I think this is true because Ulefone usually doesn't lie about the specs, and also with one full battery charge I can get easily for one day. But yeah, not really much more, but also not less. So the battery lifetime on average is one day. Then here you can see the model number, so it's DBX, and we have here a sticker with two IMEI numbers because it's a dual SIM dual standby device. Alright, here at the top we have two SIM card slots. So I'm using the micro SIM card slot which also supports 3G, and the big SIM card slot here, which is SIM card slot 1. And yeah, TF card slot right over here, so micro SDs up to 64 gigs, maybe also more, but yeah, 64 gigs work without a problem. Here you can see the antennas, then here also the camera once again, and the LED flash. And last but not least, here at the bottom we have the speaker. So the speaker grid was really big, the speaker actually is really small, but I have to say it's pretty loud. What I will do right now is reattach the battery and the back cover, and then let's have a look on how it performs in Android. Alright everybody, we're now here on the smartphone in Android, and yeah, swiping through the pages on the home screen feels really smooth. The octa-core with 1GB of RAM does a pretty good job, and yeah, multitasking, no problem. Then let's go here to settings and about the phone to see on which Android version it is running. And here is about the phone at the bottom, and you can see it's running on Android 4.4.2 KitKat. This is definitely KitKat and not some spoofed version, and yeah, if we are lucky we will also see a Lollipop version very soon, but I'm not sure when Ulefone will release their Lollipop updates. And wireless update is definitely working because I already did a wireless update. Then here at the top you can see SIM management because it's a dual SIM phone, here you can also switch off the roaming message. Then here we have Wi-Fi, and yeah, Wi-Fi is definitely working, signal is pretty okay, and yeah, it's not that good like on my Galaxy Note 4, and also the link speed is not that good. But Wi-Fi is definitely working, and the signal is also good as you can see, and yeah, the router is in the next room, so it's okay. Alright, then let's close here my home network, and let's go back to the other settings. We also have here Bluetooth, which is by the way perfectly working, no issues so far. And we have Hotknot, which is empty case NFC. Then now, let me give you a quick demonstration of what Hotknot is and what it can do for you. Now Hotknot is similar to NFC, but it's not compatible with NFC. But it also allows you to exchange data with just touching um, the other device. And here you can see the Ulefone B Pro, which is by the way also a very nice device. And if you want to check out a review on it, just check out the link down below. Now yeah, let's just try to send a picture here of my car to the Ulefone B Pro. So all we have to do is just tap at the hot not share symbol, which you can see right over here. And now we have to touch both displays. So there we go, guys. And yeah, then you will hear a little beep, and then you have to release the other phone. And now it says connecting, as you can see right over here. And yeah, this can take some time, so it's not that fast like NFC. 
And also you get disconnected from Wi-Fi if you send something. Like on the left phone on the older phone VX you can see disconnected from Wi-Fi and then it sends the picture. But yeah, um, all in all it's working and yeah, it's not that cool like NFC and also it's not compatible with NFC but hey, it's included in a $90 phone and that's really great. Then let's continue with the settings. So we stopped at hot knot and the next important thing here in the list is storage. So let's check out the partitions of the smartphone and you can choose here your default write disk and here you can see my external SD card, so 64 gigs, it's perfectly working. And here you can see the internal storage. And as you can see, the main partition is quite small, so just about six gigabytes of space and about four gigabytes of available space. So it's not really much, and if you want to buy the smartphone, get yourself a SD card, it's definitely worth it. All right, that was storage. Then here we have battery stats, and they are quite accurate. I have charged it to 100% in the morning, and yeah, it's now seven hours and um, 50 minutes on battery, and casual use, so um, in the subway I was checking my emails, checking Facebook, YouTube a bit. And the battery lifetime is quite good. So you can get easily for one day on casual use. Now on heavy use, yeah, it will be barely one day. But yeah, battery, um, pretty good on the older phone BX. Then here we can check out apps running in the background to see the RAM consumption of the ROM. And what you can see here is that less than 50% of the RAM is used, which is quite good. So the ROM is pretty good optimized and about 400 megabytes are used, and you still have something like 600 megabytes of free RAM for applications. And if you go here to all applications, then you can see that the ROM is really clean. I have also checked it with Gdata, and yeah, there's no spyware or anything on that smartphone. So Ulefone delivers really clean ROMs. Then here you can see power saving management. And yeah, this is something like power saving mode on the Samsung Galaxy S5 or something, I have not used it. Here we also have action, and this is just, for instance, double tap to wake up, then flip to mute, which is also working, but yeah, I'm not using those features, so I have deactivated them. But I really have to say, double tap to wake up is a very useful feature. Now yeah, here we have location, so that's GPS, we'll have a GPS test a bit later. Here's language and input, and let's quickly check this out. This phone also supports all languages, which are natively supported by Android. Maybe some words will remain in English, but you have to deal with it. Then here accounts, so as you can see I'm also using PayPal, so this phone is definitely safe. And yeah, that's everything here in the settings, and I would say let's go back now to the home screen and let's go through the most important features on the smartphone. So first of all, let's check out the Android status bar. So just swipe down from the top and you get your notifications. Then here you can see the quick toggle, so all the switches, and here we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, but also some other stuff like cast screen, which is supported, and that means you can stream the picture of your smartphone to a TV or something. All right, so that was the Android status bar. So let's check out the basic features like the dial application. And this phone is perfectly working in my country. So as you can see, I'm connected also to 3G. But yeah, you will maybe get the roaming message here. You can disable that in the settings and this won't charge you any additional costs. So you just have to deactivate that and yeah, no additional costs. And here you can hear the speaker quality and I think the speaker quality is definitely okay, it sounds pretty good. And yeah, that's maximum volume, that's how it sounds. And also here the sensor is working, as you can see it shuts off the display, which is really good. And just a little reminder, if you buy a smartphone from China, make sure it supports the frequencies which your provider is using in your local area. This is really important. Then here the messaging application and the vibration feedback feels pretty good. On some cheap China phones it feels horrible. But here on the older phone BX it actually feels pretty good. Alright guys, then here's just a quick demonstration of the browser. I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I'm using the standard browser and yeah, no issues. So it's really smooth and also the Wi-Fi connection is perfectly working. There are absolutely no issues if you want to browse the web or just use any app like Facebook. Absolutely no issues so far. Now let's go here to the menu and let's go through the basic applications here. So yeah, um, some pre-installed apps and the first app here in the list is the camera. So I would say let's go outside in my garden and let's do a quick camera test. Oh yeah, so we're now here outside in my garden and yeah, we have pretty good lighting to test the camera here. And the preview image looks pretty good, but that could be just because of the small screen. But I have to say the camera is not laggy or shaky and the focus is pretty fast. Also, it supports tap autofocus and also track to hold. And we have here two ducks which always come to my pond. And we can focus on them and we can also try to track them. But yeah, it only works good on some bigger objects. But yeah, it's also supported and it's the normal Android camera application which we can find on many, many MTK China phones. Then here we can switch to the front-facing camera. You will later see also a front-facing camera video test. 
and the quality looks quite okay but don't expect too much. Maximum picture size is 2 megapixels and here you can also see video mode. Alright, that's the front facing camera, let's switch back to the rear camera and let's check out the settings right over here. Now the maximum picture size in here is 8 megapixels and that's pretty good because it's not interpolated to 12 or something and I think maybe 5 megapixels interpolated to 8 but I have to say the photos look quite okay and for a $90 phone it's definitely more than enough. Also video mode is supported, tap autofocus quite fast and accurate, changes the lighting properly. All in all the camera is okay but yeah, don't expect too much, it's just a $90 phone. And as always here's a quick video test of the back camera and yeah it looks quite okay, it's not really laggy on the smartphone. Then now let's see how objects look which are more far away. And yeah they look a bit blurry as you can see but I would say it's okay. At least on the small screen here it looks okay, um, let's see how it looks on the computer, so just check for yourself. And close-ups look really nice, so let's just have a look at this, and here you can see close-ups look absolutely sharp. It just takes some time to focus, but you can see that looks absolutely sharp, at least here on the small screen. But yeah, just check for yourself how it looks for you on the computer. Then now I would say let's take the phone for a ride and let's see how it can deal with faster moving objects. So there we go guys. Here's also a quick front facing camera test and yeah, tap autofocus not working but it should focus automatically and the quality looks quite okay here on the screen but just check for yourself how it looks for you on the computer. Now yeah, that's the front facing camera of the Ulefone BX. So that was a quick camera test on the Ulefone BX and now let's check out all the remaining apps here. Then here you can also see FM radio. But as antenna you have to use a headset and a headset is not included so that's the only bad thing. Then here you can see Happy Dash and this is a game a friend of mine has coded and please check it out, it's really addictive and really funny. Then here on the second page you can see some other crap which I have installed, also net banking so I've used this phone a lot and it's definitely safe. Then yeah, it comes with the Google Play Store pre-installed, this is not always common on China phones. Sometimes they don't come with the Play Store and Google Apps because Google is blocked in China. But Ulefone installs the latest version of the Play Store on the phones and you don't have to worry about it. Also SuperSU, I don't remember, I think it was pre-rooted, but yeah, it's very easy to root with iRoot and I also have a tutorial on it. And before we come to the GPS test and the benchmarks, let's quickly check out the LED flash. And it looks beautiful, it's very wide but it's not really strong. So yeah, it's good if you lose something when it's dark, so for instance your keys, then you can use it as a flashlight. But if you want to take photos at night, then this is too weak. Now the LED looks pretty good, it's very wide, that means a good LED, but it's not a really strong one. Now that's basically it, so that are all the main features of the Ulefone BX. You will now see a GPS test, after the GPS test a movie test and speaker test and then some benchmarks and after this you will hear my conclusion about the Ulefone BX. Okay guys, so we're now here outside in my car and yes, it's a very rainy day today and it's very cloudy but I still want to show you a quick GPS test on the Ulefone BX. So GPS is also working when it's very cloudy and here you can see the GPS test. So here the signal bars, they look quite good, so um, mostly all of them above 30. Then here you can see the accuracy is something like 10 up to 40 feet. This really depends, sometimes it's just losing a satellite then it goes up. Sometimes it goes down to 9 feet and when you have very clear weather and when it's sunny you get a accuracy of about 9 feet on the MTK6592. So GPS on the Ulefone BX looks pretty good as you can see here. Sometimes I'm just for a short moment off the road but then it jumps back and then GPS is working again. But yeah, it's also very cloudy today, we have bad weather but GPS definitely working on the Ulefone BX. So let's just go and let's take it for a ride and let's see how GPS performs. 
Now here's a quick GPS test in the SideChick GPS application and yeah it works kind of nice as you can see it's a offline map GPS app and yeah I'm not using internet right now but I have to say GPS works perfectly nice it's just lagging behind one or two seconds if you take a corner because we have very bad weather today so let's just try it and there we go so let's see if it works all right and you can see um, it just looks like you would drive straight forward but then it's, it just lags behind one or two seconds and then takes the corner but we have very bad weather today as you can see it's raining but all in all GPS works perfectly nice on the Ulefone BX when you have clear weather then I have something like 9 feet accuracy and absolutely no lag but when there is bad weather like today um, GPS is a bit laggy but it's definitely working on the Ulefone BX Another review is over and I really have to say I enjoyed testing the Ulefone BX. And I know a lot of people are looking for low budget phones. And trust me guys, 
this is currently the best low budget phone you can get for $90. It's really great. It comes with a octa core and also um, pretty nice build quality. So everything on the Ula Phone BX is really good. Just the display, in my opinion, is not that good, so the resolution is not the best. The colors are okay, but the brightness. So in my opinion, the screen just could be a bit brighter. But yeah, that's everything. Except of this, the Ula Phone BX is working really good, and for $90, this is so much better than every clone you can buy for something like $100. And yeah, octa-cores for a low price. A lot of brands are trying to do this. And some of them really failed, like Wiko with the S100. The S100 really had a lot of problems, also with the display, a yellow tint. Same goes for the X-Tune Neon N2Q, which is just a rebrand. And yeah, Ulephone, Elephone, so they have really good quality. Check them out for low budget phones. Also, Elephone has some really nice low budget phones like the G-Series. And yeah, just have a look at them. They are not that bad, but please do me a favor. Don't buy such cheap replicas or clones because um, really they destroy the reputation of good Chinese brands. Every Chinese brand phone, even though it's a cheap one, will last longer than any clone. Clones, it's just like a 50-50 game. Sometimes they're dead on arrival, sometimes they last for a longer time, but yeah, you will always have a problem with a Chinese clone. So yeah, just check out Ulephone and some other reputed brands from China if you're looking for a low budget phone. All in all, I can definitely recommend the Ulephone BX, and it's a pretty good smartphone, check it out, link down below. There will be also a written review on chinadevices.com, and yeah, feel free to register, join our awesome community. We are 24,000 members right now, it's really awesome, 200 new members a day, and I would be really glad if you would also register and just check it out if you want to, and if you're interested in China phones. Alright ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, I really hope I see you again in my next videos, so have a nice day and bye bye.